Who are you? Oh, I'm part of the Neighborhood Crime Watch. The way this works is you watch, I commit the crime. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Uh, no, no. There's no talking. You just give me your watch and wallet now. Here's my problem. You're black. <laughs> Mr. Crane! What? I'm Debbie Crane. I'm a big shot. So am I. If you kill me, the headline's gonna be Black Guy Kills White Big Shot. And that's the last thing we need when we're trying to elect an African-American as president. Dear God! How about if I just blow your brains out right now? That doesn't work for me. Work for you? Daddy, please. Hey. All right, all right. Uh, all right. Watch. Wallet. Gun. Knee. Right foot. Left foot. Thank God for guns, huh, Jerry? Only in America. Sweet land of liberty violence. Hello, boys, girls, and those who sexually identify as a used fleshlight. I'm Mr. Dapperton. And today, we're not looking at actors who are anti-gun. Today, we're checking out actors that are pro-gun. Yeah, there's actually some pro-gun actors out there. Let's find out who they are. Let's start off this fine-ass video with a little Bruce Willis. Whoa. What is this, a pirate gun? It's old school. Mm -hmm. Like you, right? Right. Get down! Get down! Get down! Supported additional gun control stuff like the assault weapons ban and things. Okay, let me interject real quick. I'll make it snappy. 1997 was in the middle of the assault weapons ban where we banned anything above a 10 round magazine capacity. We banned AR-15s, AK-47s. Since we brought back those things, since we got rid of that bill and brought back AK-47s, AR-15s, and 30 round magazines, the crime rate dropped 51%. It dropped 51%. These weapons save lives. They don't take them away. Now do your thing, Brucey. No, I think that you can't start to pick apart any of uh, anything out of the Bill of Rights without thinking that it's all going to become undone. If you, if you take one out or change one law, then why wouldn't they take all your rights away from you? So it's a difficult thing, and I really feel, feel uh, bad for those families. I, I'm a father, and... Uh, it's, it's just a tragedy. But I don't know how you legislate uh, insanity. I don't know what you do about it. I don't even know how you begin to to stop that. I guess you've done this before. Not encouraging. And actually. Come and get him! The real life topic really uh, is diminished by suggesting that anything in Hollywood caused the uh, circumstances that just happened recently and happened anytime somebody goes a little off the rails or a lot off the rails. That is a totally different story. We're not making movies about people that have gone berserk or gone nuts. Those kind of movies wouldn't wouldn't last very long at all. I've answered this question from time to time, but I don't think the one thing has to do with anything with the other. No one commits a crime because they saw a film. There's there's nothing to support that. Iconic American hip hop artist Ice T was here in the studio. The self styled godfather of gangster rap had come to talk about a new documentary he's made about the art of rapping, which we'll be running on tomorrow night's program. But while he was here and news about the Denver shooting was coming in, I briefly took the opportunity to ask him about his own attitude towards guns. And I asked him why he's such a defender of the right to bear arms. Well, I'd give up my gun when everybody else does. And is that Doesn't your that make own? sense? Well, <laughs> doesn't that make sense? I mean, if you were to, if, if there were guns here, would you be on to be the only person without one? And he's right. What the government wants to do is make it so everybody has guns, except you, the law-abiding citizen. You won't be able to get guns because they're highly restricted. But could the criminals still get guns? 
Hell yes, because there's 500 million guns on the market. In the black market now, because you made them illegal, and the people that had them legally sold them to the black market. So now the black market's flooded with cheap guns for criminals to buy. So criminals will be locked and loaded everywhere. And, and will the government still have guns? Yes. So who will have guns? Everybody except for you. That's what gun control does. So, you, so, so do you carry guns Not routinely any. at home? I mean, you have, gun, you have a gun at home? Yeah, it's legal in the United States. It's part of our Constitution. You know, the right to bear arms is because that's the last form of defense against tyranny. Not to hunt, but hunt. It's to protect yourself from the police. And do you see any link between that and these sorts of incidents? No. Nah, not really. You know what I'm saying? If somebody wants to kill people, you know, they don't need a gun to do it. Makes it easier, though, doesn't it? Not really. You can use, uh, you can strap explosives on your body. They do that all the time. In Nice, France, 86 people were slaughtered by a truck. By one incident with one truck. Yes, that's more people murdered by truck than ever killed and in one single incident with a gun. You think mass shootings are bad? Well, a maniac behind a truck is even worse. So when there's the inevitable backlash mm -hmm. of the anti-gun lobby as a result of this incident, as it always is... Well, that's not going to change anything it's in the United States. Anything. No. The United States is based on guns. You know? Like KRS says, you'll never have justice on stolen land. So it's not going to change. Both in your acting career and, uh, I guess, in your work as a police officer, you had to do, to deal with lots of guns, and you... What's this? Did I throw a little Steven Seagal in here? Yes, I did. And allow him to speak truth onto you. You do seem to have a liking of uh, sophisticated weaponry. You are here in Russia to uh, promote a um, sniper rifle that will bear, as far as I understand, your own name. What attracts you in guns? Is it engineering is it the sense of power something else maybe i mean i believe in um you know the sport the olympics the uh, shooting and olympics long range shooting uh all these things but i also believe that every country has the right to defend their own country every man has the right to defend his own wife and children and home and i also believe that right should triumph over evil and so I don't have anything against guns because guns in and of themselves don't kill people. People kill people. So gun is just like a plant or a, a tool, you know, and you can, you can either do good with it, which is to protect and nurture humanity and mankind or destroy. And I'm here to nurture and protect people. Now, I think your own country, the United States, has a very complicated relationship with guns because on one hand it's almost perceived as a symbol of freedom protected by the Second Amendment, but on the other hand, it also created a specifically American form of violence, mass violence, mass shootings in schools and universities. So I wonder, where do you stand on the issue of gun control in the United States? Well, first of all, I believe in, in the Second Amendment and the Constitution more than anything in the world. And I think that Adolf Hitler, for example, when he wanted to annihilate the people of Germany, the first thing he did was take away their guns. And the, 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 the rights to bear arms wasn't just to protect the people from foreign invaders, it was to protect them against evil governments and anyone that would violate their inherent rights as a human being. So I believe in the Second Amendment and I believe that, I hate to say this, a lot of these mass murders and all this funny stuff that's going on, I believe a lot of this is engineered. And yet in the aftermath of the, I think it was Newtown shooting, you were engaged in a Connecticut program, I think, to teach uh, children in self-defense. Do you think those skills would be helpful if they were faced with somebody who was armed to the team. Well, first of all, I wasn't teaching children to defend themselves. I was teaching what's called the posse, which are sworn officers to come in and defend schools. And so these are people that have had training with firearms. They have had police training. They're just not on my level, but they are, you know, sworn. <laughs> They're not on my level. God damn it, he's so badass. But you still thought that that, uh, that engagement was important and there, that there's something has to be done about the gun situation within schools and the universities. The most precious gift we have from God is our children. Why can't we spend money 
and time to protect our schools and our children. They have armed guards at every bank, at every jewelry store. If you go around Champs-Élysées, you go around France and Monaco and Beverly Hills, there's all these armed guards everywhere protecting money and jewelry. Why can't we protect our children? I don't know, that's a good question. Um, I have to ask you this. Uh, do you think Hollywood and in particular action movies are partially responsible for glorification of I don't, uh, gun violence. I don't. No? I think that, you know, the, the, the more important thing we need to look at here is mental health because there are mentally insane people in every country and God knows we have our share in America. And I think this is the most important thing to learn there. Look at, I think statistically it's sort of proven that You know, in Japan, for example, where they have the most violent movies on earth, and they have almost zero crime. What does that tell you? It's not really the movies as much as it's mental health issues and how these people can get help. Okay, so he's going after the mentally ill, and I don't like that. The mentally ill only commit 3% of crime. Uh, mentally ill people aren't committing the crimes that you think they are. Um, Mentally ill are people like your sister, your mother, people in your family. The ADHD, bipolar disorder, that is the mentally ill. Asperger's is mentally ill. These people have the right to defend themselves like anybody else. They shouldn't lose constitutional rights just because they're sick. That is stupid. What you want to go after is people that are mentally unstable, people that have a history of violence. These people should lose rights. Now, it's true that people that have mental illness are 2 to 3% more likely to commit crime. But you have to understand that you shouldn't discriminate against them. Because look at it this way. Uh, wouldn't it be bad if people discriminated against black people who are 5.5 times more likely to commit crime? Five times more likely to commit crime. Not a couple percent. No, five times more likely. So if you're saying we're, we should discriminate against the mentally ill, you're also saying, hey, We should discriminate against blacks. Uh, that's not fair. Neither is fair. Don't do either. But yeah, if somebody has a history of violence, take away their gun rights by all means. But don't go discriminating against every person with a mental illness thinking that they're going to kill people when they're not. Even schizophrenics, not even 1% of them are killers. Not even 1%. So why should 100% lose gun rights? Also, there's like six types of schizophrenics. Most of them don't even hear voices or have hallucinations. Some of them are like disorganized schizophrenics, where it's just extreme ADHD. Why should those people lose gun rights? Just because of a little disorganization, they should lose gun rights? That's silly. The fact is, most schizophrenics are harmless. In fact, people that are on drugs are more dangerous than even the most severely mentally ill. By three times. And it's also parenting. You know, if you have parents who love the children, spend time with their children, teach their children right from wrong, and they have real parenting, you won't see any of this. And yet, if we look at the um, pure data, statistics of violence in the United States, and the access that kids have to uh, guns, the uh, amount of time they spent with their parents, it, it doesn't look pretty well. Oh, woman, please. I guarantee you haven't even looked at the evidence. I guarantee you're like every other left-winger who thinks there's 91 deaths by gun violence a day, thinking that means murder. No, they, they use that word, deaths by gun violence, to fool you. It doesn't mean murder. Most of that's suicide. Like, the vast majority of that's suicide. You cut out the suicide, and uh, there's only 32 gun homicides a day in America. And that includes self-defense killings. So, even less... Less than 32 gun homicides a day in America is freaking microscopic in a society that has 320 million people. It's microscopic. The gun debate is overblown. But Mr. Dapperton, CNN told me there was 500 million school shootings just this morning. Yeah, they include BB shootings as mass shootings. They, cl they include uh, accidental discharges on campus or just in the general area as mass shootings, even if there's no death or no injury. And uh, this is what they include as a school shooting sometimes. Uh, somebody commits suicide on a street that runs through a school. That's a mass shooting according to them. And most of these mass shootings and school shootings, no one even dies. 
it's kind of funny to a left winger. There is no failed mass shooting. There, there isn't that that doesn't exist to them because if you, if you try to kill somebody and you just injure a couple people and then you die because a law abiding citizen killed you. Well, guess what? That's still a mass shooting. Even if the person was killed before the mass shooting even started and there was no deaths. Yeah, that's still a mass shooting. Let's say four guys break into your home and you shoot all four of them. That's a mass shooting, according to these statistics, because more than four got injured. That, yes, they even include self-defense killings. It's freaking ridiculous. But Dapperton, they're technically mass shootings because that's the way they're defined. That may be the way they're defined, and you may technically be right. They're mass shootings because you made a freaking BB shooting a mass shooting. You made uh, somebody committing suicide a mass shooting. You made uh, an accidental discharge a mass shooting. Yeah, you made everything a mass shooting. So yeah, it may technically be a mass shooting because that's the way you defined it. But it, it's not as bad as people actually dying by a real mass shooter. So we're not going to pretend for a second that it is. By saying a BB shooting or an accidental discharge or, or a planned suicide is a mass shooting, all you're hurting is the people that go through real mass shootings, people that lose real love to ones. You're only hurting them by inflating the numbers like this. Look at it this way. They're one of the rare ones suffering from a real mass shooting in the last month, but then you bury it under 30 freaking fake mass shootings. Suddenly, nobody even cares about their daughter or lost loved one anymore. That is bullshit. You guys suck for that. To be honest with you, my opinion is that the economy is so bad in America and the common people are spending every waking moment just trying to survive to the point where many of them feel like they, they really don't even have the luxury to spend time with their children. Now, you know me, I saved the best for last. So let's watch it. Or rather, listen to it because it wasn't filmed. This is freaking Kurt Russell. One of the baddest ass people to ever exist. Everything else, it's a different vibe, you know. There's all, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't understand the concepts of conversation of the gun culture. We, we, we've, we've lived with guns since, what, the seventh century or something? Well, I don't know. We all know that right now, guns is a trope. It's a, uh, I mean, it's not a trope, it's a, it's a totem, it's a metaphor that um, disenfranchised white guys need. It makes them feel good because they're being... You can say what you want. I don't agree with that. So it's not my thing. But it's so, statistically... You know. well, I, you can look. If you, think that, if you think gun control or something like that is going to change a terrorist point of view, I think you're, like, out of your mind. I think no. you're, like... I think anybody is. I think, I think it's absolutely insane. The problem, the, pro the, the problem we're having right now is, is that we don't have the concepts of how to um, turn it around and say, you know... I, you, you may think you've got me worried about what you're going to do. Dude, you're about to find out what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And that's going to worry you a lot more. And that's what we need. That will change the concept of gun culture, as you call it, to something of reality, which is uh, if I'm a hockey team and i got a guy bearing down on me as a goaltender, I'm not concerned about what he's going to do. I'm going to make him concerned about what I'm going to do. I guess Obama's you know. point was that the guys who are on the no-fly list, no-fly list because of terrorist mm -hmm. connections, can get a gun pretty easily. They can also make a bomb pretty easily. Yeah. So what? They can also get knives and stab you. What are you going to do about that? They can get cars and run you over with them. What are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? They didn't kill the people in San Bernardino. Oh, cars. but they've killed others that way. Haven't they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what are you going to do? Outlaw everything? That isn't the answer. Just put some controls. Just, that, put some controls. What? So the people, so the, so the people who want to defend themselves can't. No, not so you can't. Just so the idiots can't get a hold of them. That's Do you I'm really saying. believe they're not going to? Are you are you serious about that? Yeah, are you seriously? Higher. What good will that? Oh my God! You and I just disagree. Okay. You and I just disagree. I I I I I, I understand that you think that you can control the behavior of people that are dead set on taking um, your way of life away from you. I think you think you can control that. No. And that there's uh, only one thing you can do with that and yeah. so say, no, dude, that's not going to happen. Okay. That's just not going to happen. Speak with you, Good talking with you. <laughs> Good luck with you,
Hi, I'm Chuck Norris, a black belt patriot. If some thug breaks into my home, I can use my roundhouse kick, but I'd prefer he look down the barrel of my gun. And millions of other law-abiding families also rely on their Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Some politicians say they support your rights, but unfortunately, their voting records say otherwise. Protect your rights on Election Day. Check the candidates' records and see who stood up for your families and who protected the criminals. I'm Chuck Norris, and I approve this message. Just let them try and outlaw those guns. Second Amendment, uh, gun control. You've been on the uh, NRA's board since 95, mm -hmm. and this is a subject that you maybe feel more strongly about than any other. I believe that a person... Make your case. I believe that a person's uh, moral compass can be determined by how he references free men the right to defend themselves. The Second Amendment is so obvious to me, it's, it's insane that there's an argument. God gave, let's, let's pretend there is no document. Let's pretend brave families didn't leave the tyrants and the slave drivers of Europe so that they could practice the religion of their choice, so that they could speak out without being murdered, that they could produce wool without the king's men coming and taking it from them every season of harvest. Let's pretend none of that happened. Let's just pretend this guy named Ted Nugent parachuted onto earth and woke up one morning and saw these wonderful resources and had dreams of excellence and being the best that I could be. I don't need a document, and I don't need another man to explain to me that I have the right to defend my gift of life, and that there is an argument in America from Hillary Clinton, from Barbara Boxer, Diane Feinstein, from a whole gaggle of numbnuts who would try to tell me they will dictate where, how, and if I can defend myself. I find that preposterous. I find it unacceptable, and I will not accept it. I am a free man. Don't tread on me. A good, law-abiding citizen, not convicted of a felon, the Second Amendment of our Bill of Rights is my concealed weapons permit, period. That's it? That's it. So no limitations of any kind that you no. can see? None. That's it. The limitation should be Instead of arresting people for molesting children 24 times, I would rather the dad walked into the room, found a person molesting that child, and blew his brains out. I would rather that the lady in Massachusetts last month, who was taking her daughter to soccer, uh, who was carjacked by a recidivistic maggot who'd been in the prison system all his life, but was let out again because we feel sorry for him. Maybe he had a bad childhood. Instead of her being hijacked and murdered, I'd rather she just shot the bastard dead. But in Massachusetts, somebody decided she can't do that. So she's dead. I would rather she was alive and the carjacker was dead. I'm weird. I would, I would rather that the guy who beat this lady to within an inch of her life in Waco, on parole was he, phenomenal and beat her to within an inch of his life in front of her grandchildren with a whiskey bottle. I would rather she fell to the ground, pulled out a 38, and shot him six times in the chest and killed him. Am I weird? Because the guy is going to get out again. I don't like repeat offenders. I like dead offenders. Do you suck dicks? Sir, no, sir! Are you a Peter Pepper? Sir, no, sir! I'll bet you're the kind of guy that would fuck a person in the ass and not even have the goddamn common courtesy to give him a reach around. What are your thoughts about uh, the right of people to be armed, the average citizen? You know what, I think if everybody was armed, uh, there would be less crime. I really do. I mean, if, if I'm a robber and I think that you might have a gun, I'm, I'm going to think twice about coming up and approaching you in a dark alley or on the street or wherever the hell you might be or taking your car from you at an intersection. I'm going to stop and think, think twice about that before I do that. We've got uh, bold criminals that will walk right up to your, your driver's side window and, and point a gun at you and tell you to get the hell out of your car and jump in your car and drive it away. I don't think these people would be that bold if, if they felt that maybe this guy might be armed. If, if everybody had the right to carry a firearm in America, of course we would sort out and weed out the nuts, the criminals, mm -hmm. the, uh, the drug addicts, 
we would never let them buy weapons. We're supposedly, that's what our system does today. Mm -hmm. They have this ridiculous thing that you have to fill out every time you buy a handgun. It, it's just totally ridiculous. <laughs> Why was it unfortunate? What did he do? Did he punch you? He, 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 didn't, he didn't want to talk about the issue and he, he got pretty annoyed about it. And um, you, you share a similar view to him from the interviews that I've read and that you've said you don't think there's any link between movie violence and video games and real life gun crime. Is that what you think? And, and if so, why? Well, I grew up, I actually grew up playing with guns. I mean, we had toy guns. We had toy guns. If Christmas was not Christmas, if I didn't get a new toy gun, a cap pistol or something. And we shot at each other. We chased each other with these guns. We did all this stuff. And none of my friends ever shot anybody. We also had real guns in my house. And I shot those too, in the woods or at cans or at birds or whatever. And we still never turned those guns on each other. We understood what guns did to a human being or what gun violence actually was. We understood it very well. Um, I don't think one thing has to do with the other. That sitting in a movie theater watching people shoot each other doesn't make people want to go out and shoot other people, not people who are not mentally unbalanced. Um, a good value system, a set of parents that tells you right from wrong, you understanding right from wrong, having a spiritual connection to your fellow man and the world, lets you know what's right and what's wrong, what's morally correct and what's not morally correct. But a lot of people don't have that, do they? Who are they? Who are they? And those people aren't my responsibility. Don't, but don't you think part of teaching people right and wrong and what's cool and what's desirable is also in the movies. No. But the movies are influential things. I mean, Jules, your character in Pulp Fiction, is the ultimately cool bad guy, isn't he? I don't know. I guess he is to some people. To me, he's just a character. He was a guy. He had a job. He did his job a specific way. He was a professional. He was good at his job. He was not distracted when he was doing his job. That's why John Travolta got killed and I didn't, because he got distracted. Um, you know, I don't... I don't deal with characters in movies in that particular way when people say, but you're, you're a role model. Okay, I'm a role model. If you want me to be a role model, ask me. I'm a college graduate. I'm a father, a husband, a son. I'm a good person with all that. I'm a citizen. I pay my taxes. I've never been arrested. I believe in education. I believe in one's, you know, treating man the way you want man to treat you. Yeah, I'm a movie star to you. To me, I'm just a guy with an interesting job. You know, I don't want to cut in line in front of you. I don't want to, you know, lord it over you because you see me or I'm famous. I'm famous because you think I'm famous. Don't ask my characters. Don't ask Nick Fury to be your role model. Don't ask Mace Windu to be your role model. Don't ask Jules Winfield to be your role model. If you're talking about Samuel Jackson, I'm a professional. I show up at work on time. I know my lines. I hit my marks and I treat the other actors and the crew members with respect. That's a role model. It has nothing to do with who the characters are that I play on screen. You know, the, the president has commissioned this research from the CDC into whether they think there might be some link between what kids see on the screen and how they act. If that comes up and finds that there is a recognizable link. Come on. Would, would that change your view at all? Somebody's gonna find there's a recognizable link because that's what they're paid to do. Take that money and give those kids some 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 spiritual training everybody's against that everybody talks about you know you you uh, can't dictate people's religion and god all right whatever whatever your god is your god is telling you to treat other people with respect do that take that money and give those kids give them gun training if you want to gun safety training or explain to them that fantasy is fantasy reality is reality I read books all my life. Books have violence in them, even the Bible. There's violence in all those books. It's not just movies. People need to understand parents have a responsibility. It's not the government's responsibility to make people better people. It's your parents' responsibility to make you a better person. You I think the problem with America, let alone the world, is relatively deep. But to break it down simply, it all starts with the problem of people breaking up the nuclear family and having single moms taking care of kids by themselves. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the mother and father being broken up, as long as the father sees the child and he's a relatively good father. But if the mother doesn't have a father figure for that child, that's the problem. 
They need a stepdad. They need somebody. The mother can't be both the mother and the father. It does not work that way. The balance just simply isn't there. It needs to be two people. So one person could be the uh, sentimental uh, listening type, while the other one teaches you to be tough and control your emotions. But the point is, if the mother isn't there with some sort of father figure to be there, that could be a real freaking issue. When people grow up without a father, they are lost, confused. They don't learn to cherish simple things like individual freedom. They tend to lean more towards security than freedom, which, as you know, is a terrible thing. But that's not all. They account for 63% of youth suicides. That's a huge deal. Then for runaways, they account for 90% of all homeless and runaway youths. They account for 85% of all children that exhibit behavioral disorders. They account for 71% of all high school dropouts. They account for 70% of juveniles in state-operated institutions. They even account for 75% of adolescents' patients in substance abuse centers. And finally, 75% of rapists motivated by displaced anger. If you want your child to succeed, make sure he has a good father figure in his life. Not just for you, not just for him, but for society. I truly believe that this creates a lot of the bad actors that we have in society today. When you have no morals being taught to you, like what's right and what's wrong, one of the things that you don't learn is that might doesn't make right. These type of people, these people that grow up without fathers, tend to believe that might does make right and that action should be judged solely by its consequences only. So if the greater good is served by a little violence, then do that violence. That's what they believe. This may sound okay on paper, but this is consequentialism. You know who was a consequentialist? Thanos. He believed when he snapped his fingers and eradicated half of humanity that he served the greater good because now there's enough resources to go around for the rest of humanity. And obviously Thanos was the bad guy in that movie, right? I mean, for good reason. Consequentialists are bad people. These type of people tend to be collectivists in nature and believe, for example, that we can steal from the rich using violence because it helps the greater good. That's a consequentialist argument. Or in more extreme examples, kill the rich if the greater good is served. But the people with fathers who are taught morals will say, no, those rich people's lives matter. Their individual rights matter. Might doesn't make right just because it serves the greater good. People with fathers are taught better ethics. For example, deontological ethics. These are the type of good ethics that are taught to people with parents. The ones without parents around to teach them the good morals and good ethics, they end up being consequentialists a lot of the time. And if you're not convinced that fatherlessness leads to consequentialism, Look at this. Okay, there is 20% of 23.6% of Americans are consequentialists. Okay? And 23.6% of children in the US are fatherless. I shit you not. That is that is not a joke. Look at look at the stats yourself. I know correlation doesn't equal causation, but this this is eerie. I may be onto something here, but let's get back to the crux of the issue. More and more mothers are raising their children being single because they're strong and independent women, but they are undermining how important fathers are. And most importantly, how important those morals that those fathers teach the children are. Believe it or not, fathers are extremely important. Christians know this. They know how important the nuclear family is. This is why I love Christianity, because it promotes the nuclear family, and it gets rid of a lot of society's problems. I think they're wrong about the God situation. I'm atheist. But I love the fact that they promote the nuclear family. They get people enshrined with basic principles of morality, because there's fathers teaching their children the basic principles of morality. They are less likely to do drugs, less likely to commit crime, less likely to get involved with an extreme ideology, like radical leftism, for example, and less likely to become the cancer of the earth. Dads matter. 
That is the crux and most important message of this video. So what does this mean? If you're a mother, for the love of God, cherish your husband and do what you can to salvage that relationship. And if you know of a stepdad that is actively helping taking care of a kid that doesn't have their real father readily available in a healthy way, then cherish that stepdad. I believe being a stepdad is probably pretty hard and they don't get enough credit. It's no secret that people that have stepdads usually grow up to be misguided, but they're not nearly as misguided as people who grow up with no dad. So cherish stepdads, especially cherish those who adopt. Adopt yourself if you can. People who need adoption are not only lacking a father figure, but a mother figure as well and doubly need help. Point is, parents are important. I can't stress enough how important a father figure is to a child's mind and psyche. It is essential. Dads matter. Retweet this, uh, share this, subscribe and like this video to help the algorithm, and also consider hitting the bell button for notifications for my next video if you liked it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Later. Keanu Reeves is such a beast, a sexy beast. <gasps> he shoots fast, but can he reload fast? Ah, uh, yep, yes he can. Wow, that was beautiful. Ten seconds <gasps> flat. Ten seconds flat? That's what she said. Am I right, boys? Hmm, is anyone looking? I don't think so. Let me just, uh... Wow, good job. <laughs> that, was awesome. that was raging, Keanu. Raging like the boner I have for Keanu Reeves and his guns. That's right, you shoot those guns. The sexy guns, you sexy beast. Yeah, baby, you reload that gun. You reload it. Oh, you shoot him, yes. Oh. Okay, I'm clear. Oh. John Wick, call me Mufasa. Baby, call me Mufasa. Oh. No. Not yet. He has the skills that make me splooge. Here it comes. Here it comes. Biggity bing. Um, uh, no homo.